Hello everybody. Um, so today I'm going to uh, talk to you about the about this topic of brain death, irreversibly comatose patients, and the sanctity of life ethic. Um, I hope that this would be useful for you as you um, prepare for your as you do your midterm exam, and also um, perhaps it might be useful for you if you are writing a final paper on on this on this topic or some similar topic. So um, uh, this basically, I'll, in talking about this topic, I'll be drawing from certain uh, things that that were brought up by Peter Singer in his paper, is the sanctity of life ethic, uh, terminally ill, and I think it is useful and important to uh, for me to, to uh, use a video to talk about this because I have noticed uh, from past semesters that um, many students find this particular uh, article to be um, rather challenging. So um, let me just go through a couple of basic concepts. Uh, first, the sanctity of life ethic. Uh, briefly speaking, um, the sanctity of life ethic holds that it is always wrong to intentionally end a human life. So you can understand the sanctity, ethic, uh, and sanctity of life ethic best if you think about it in terms of answering this question. So the question would be, uh, when is it permissible for doctors intentionally to end the life of a patient? Uh, the answer given by the sanctity of life ethic would be never. It is never permissible for um, a doctor to uh, permiss to intentionally end the life of a patient, even if the patient is irre irreversibly comatose, even if the patient has no chance of ever recovering uh, consciousness. Um, so, so this is uh, traditionally what the sanctity life of uh, life ethic holds about intentionally ending the life of a patient. However, um, in the 20th century, starting from the 20th century, uh, due to advances in medical technology, it has become possible to keep, um, uh, keep patients that would previously have died uh, on life support indefinitely. Um, and, and what this means is that uh, there, is a way, there is a high cost of keeping patients, keeping these irreversibly, irreversibly comatose patients alive. And also, what this also means is that um, the, um, there is the, the, the patient's organs, which could be used for uh, by other people who need them for transplantations, uh, are not being used. Um, so, uh, so there is this, against the sanctity of life ethic, there is this very practical problem of the high cost of keeping irreversibly comatose patients alive, and um, the need for, and the fact that their organs uh, could be used for transplantation. Um, so, what to do? Well, the Harvard Brain Death Committee in 1968 uh, decided to come up with an interesting way of solving the problem. And they proposed to solve the problem by redefining death, by redefining what it means to be dead. So um, the Harvard Brain Death Committee in 1968 uh, changed the definition of death from the traditional definition of death um, to, the, uh, to the notion of brain death. So, um, brain death. So, what this means is that uh, on this new definition, uh, you are if somebody is technically dead. If that person, uh, if all of that person's brain functions have ceased, so even though that person's heart is still beating, uh, that person is considered dead if that person has uh, no more brain functions. Which sounds simple enough um, for a while, except that um, except that in the last couple of decades, uh, many. Um, we have developed more and more sensitive uh, measuring equipment um, which has allowed us to discover that even patients that are supposedly brain dead actually still have some brain functions uh, going on because uh, when you cut open these patients to harvest their organs, um, their heartbeat rises and their blood pressure also rises and this is only possible this can only happen if some if some brain functions are still uh, operating uh, to uh, to control the blood pressure and the heartbeat. So what this means is that um, brain dead what patients that we thought were brain dead aren't really totally brain dead. So what do you do? Um, well, one way to solve this problem is to uh, is to redefine yet again the definition of death. So one way is to uh, is to change the definition of death. So that in, uh, so that when when we talk about brain death, we are not talking about the um, the cessation of all brain functions, but only about the cessation of the higher brain functions, the functions that are associated with consciousness and the cerebral cortex. So, um, 
if you change if we if you change the definition of brain death to the cessation of all higher brain functions, then it is possible. Um, it is possible to still say that uh, patients are dead, brain dead, uh, even if um, some brain functions like those responsible for regulating blood pressure are still going on. Um, however, uh, Peter Singer in his paper, uh, Peter Singer, uh, thinks that this is not a good way to go. Um, he believes that you know redefining the redefining uh, the the definition the definition of death yet again in order to keep in line with the sanctity of life ethic um, is not a good way to go because even though when you, if you do if you redefine the definition of death you can harvest people's organs uh, while still saying that you're not intentionally killing a living person because that person is technically dead um, this is not a good way to go because. Uh, um, many people uh, in the uh, many many laypersons and doctors as well are becoming uncomfortable with the idea of um, uh, of cutting open somebody uh, who is who uh, who is really uh, still breathing and alive. Um, I mean, if somebody's uh, if somebody still has a heartbeat, uh, if somebody uh, is still breathing, if somebody um, blood 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 pressure changes. And is even able to move away from the source of pain when we're being cut open. Um, all our common sense intuitions would suggest that this this thing in front of you is alive. Um, and telling you that so 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 and many people still believe that persons who are brain dead are still actually alive in because of all these uh, all these things that they observe. So changing the definition of death uh, um, yet again. To talk to to include the cessation of only higher brain functions is a very artificial move, according to Peter Singer. Uh, Singer believes that uh, it is a much better it is a much better approach to simply um, deny the the correctness of the sanctity of life ethic altogether. So rather than redefine the definition of death, rather than saying that um, we are not actually intentionally ending the life of people, uh, what we should do is to is to is to actually bite the bullet, so to speak, and say that there re there might be circumstances when it is morally permissible, when it is okay to intentionally end the life of a patient. So singers, uh, I'm looking for my pastor. So sing uh, singers' answer to this question would be, uh, would be that it is it may be permissible to end the life of a patient when the patient's life. When the patient's continued existence, is of no further value, is of no further value to her and to others around her. And um, in order to cite his uh, uh, to to support this particular conclusion, uh, in his article, Singer cites the case of Tony Bland, uh, that young the young man who uh, whose lungs were crushed uh, in the uh, in the soccer match in England, and um, he he cites that as uh, as evidence that uh, even even lay people uh, even lay people who are uh, that like judges who are uh, who are involved in making them in deciding cases and making them and interpreting the law have already come to the uh, are, are already approaching the position that it may be morally okay to end the life of people of somebody when that person's continued existence is of no further value to uh, to her and to others around her. Um, so single suggestion is that rather than try to tiptoe around the idea of ending somebody's life intentionally by redefining the definition of death, it is better and probably more honest to just say that there are circumstances, i.e., circumstances in which the patient's life is of no further interest, of sorry, no further value to that person. In such circumstances, the it may be right and the best thing to do. Uh, to end that person's life intentionally. So, um, I hope you find this useful uh, as you are preparing for your exam and your um, and in writing your papers if you should choose to do so. And perhaps you will see me again on screen. Thank you.